So tonight, as you all know, Joe Fontesha will be doing his evening Zoom musical. There it is. Tell your friends. It's all, you can get to it. Uh, the link is going to be sent out three hours prior to the event. Um, so it'll be sent out at 1230 MT or 330 PM. Um, if you're looking for the link in the meantime, you can easily go on to, let me mute everybody there. Boop. Uh, okay, students, behave yourselves. All right. We're going to, uh, let's see here. Let me spotlight me. I wore my special guitar. Jerry, no, this is Carlos Santana. Santano. San, ugh, Carlos Santana. I can't wait till I get this flipper out of my mouth. <clears throat> guitar tie. I might play some music on there. Um, so we have tonight, as I mentioned, we have Joe Fontesha uh, and his um, evening Zoom musical with a very rare performance that's going to be happening. And this Friday, we have Member Appreciation Day, grand finale with our students. Each store has a student uh, and I'm playing on a variety of models, by the way. We have people playing on a Aria, a Freedom 3, an Easy 4, a Stardust, all sorts of this. So it's going to be a nice variety. And I'm going to kick off with some music. And, uh, and then we'll go over a couple little tips. And then I got some other inst instructional things that we're going to start teaching. I'm going to start teaching you over time. We're not going to learn it in one lesson, I will tell you that, and, and I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. But first, let me play a little bit of uh, music for you. Um, I got the camera, two cameras here, so I think I'll just start with the laptop one, and we'll have a little fun here. Here we go. Why, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully by now you have the music and materials. I made it, uh, I put it in the email today. I will also insert it in the chat here so you have it. And let me see, chat, file, my computer. And let me go to virtual classes and let's see, learn how to memorize a song in Hindu. So I just uh, uploaded it on the computer as well. And keep in mind, um, something I want to share with you moving forward. Um, uh, this, I'm going to go through it rather quickly. So if you have questions about this, um, keep in mind, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But I'm going, to, I'm going to share this with you. And you have a lot of time to work on this on your own. Um, Yesterday, I taught a, I didn't actually, Jerome taught, and I facilitated, helped him with a, 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 a Christmas um, song of the month, and we gave some materials. The files were so large that it was a little difficult for me to put it in the email. So as you notice today, and let me pull this up for you. So today, yesterday, let me go with yesterday's first. Um, I'm sorry, today's. So if you notice in today's, <coughs> where is it? <coughs> I know it's somewhere around here. Give me a break. Give me a minute, folks. Well, wherever it's at. Um, I'll have to search for it in a second. When you click on the link, it should automatically uh, open up the, um, the files that you need for today. And you can print and download it. And so let me click on it here for you. 
in case you're having trouble with it. It said click here to uh, click here for the materials and it should automatically open that up. In the future, however, I'm going to some of the files. I've had a lot of people join our classes um, a little late as we were doing them and, and I'll get an email every now and then saying, can you give me the materials? Can you get me the materials? Well, this weekend on Saturday, <clears throat> I'm going to send an email with the upcoming classes or what have you. And in that email, you're going to have an option to click on and view all the materials over the, since April on these product feature classes and virtual classes. And what you're going to notice is, uh, here's an example. So yesterday, if you saw this email, it said uh, click here for the materials, the class materials. If you click on it, it gives you an option to download and then it says sign in. You don't have to sign in. You can just click out of that and then very easily there's a little arrow up here and when you click on it, it says direct download. Once you do that, it will download it to your computer. This weekend, I'm going to send an email with a link. Now check this out. <clears throat> Again, I'm not going to go through the entire email, but when you click on it, it's going to open up this, and then you'll be able to choose. Over time, this link will grow. And you'll be able to pick and choose the things you want. So if you notice here, it says Session 1. That was way back on April 8th, April 15th, and so forth. So someone said, I came in. I Where's all the materials? when uh, Jason taught or Joe taught or when so-and-so did. And you can go back to each one of these and then you can click on it. In that case, there's nothing. There was no materials that week. Now watch this one. There's materials here. And then you can download that information as needed. Again, I'm not going to go in detail on it today because we got a, a whole other class, but I wanted to tell you, so when you see that, <clears throat> Over time, I'm going to be referencing that a lot and showing people a lot of that. And then hopefully over time, you'll, you'll be able to access that. And the beauty is, is if you save that link, as I update it, it automatically puts it in there for you. <clears throat> now, let's talk about learning how to memorize a song. So what I'm going to do is you should have a handout that looks something like this. All right. Uh, it has the music, just a nice, simple, when the saints go marching in, and a blank page. And it says 1, A, B, C, 2, A, B, 3, A, 4, <clears throat> blank. Okay. I did it that way because I want you to fill in the information. As we go, I have I have the, my my printout. Now here's what I'm going to do. This weekend, I'm going to this material, my sheet, my typed hand sheet is going to be in that link. So you'll be able to go in today's and print this out. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to advise you to take some really good notes. I'm going to also put it in the screen share here. Uh, at the end and I'll even share it in the chat. Well, let me ask you a question folks and I'm gonna put it to my gallery mode here so I can see some faces here. All right. <clears throat> Hi Bonnie, Jerry, I don't know how it went to you but nice to see you. All right. So I'm going to just a show of hands here. I'm going to look and you can. And if you have your gallery view, um, it's good to do that from time to time, even though I spotlight my video. And that way you could see all the other participants. But just I got a question for you. How many of you feel you have a good memory? Come on, raise your hands. We got a couple there. I got some raising your hands, some. Peggy's trying to raise her hand. She's trying to say she's got a good memory, but she doesn't want anybody to catch on that. I don't know. Maybe she's trying to fool us. Flamingo. 
You have a good memories. Some people are like, you should see some of the looks I'm getting. It's like, <laughs> right? Robert, you have a question? I do? Yes. You have two questions, actually. Okay. From Joyce Waltman. Yep. Go ahead, Joyce. They may be raising oh. their hand. No, it's a question. mistake. I was just raising my hand that I have a good memory. <laughs> oh, you have a good memory. Okay. Know how to do the computer I'll stuff. try to re I'll try to remember that <laughs> okay <clears throat> all right um, so I you know, we get we I always get a mixed review on that some shake their hand some kind of reluctantly do it and some just don't want to say anything but the interesting thing is what a lot of people don't realize is well let me ask you this let me ask you another question <clears throat> when you're out and about, when you do leave to go out of your house, because I'm sure you got to do it at some point, right? We're all still stuck at home. Some people still go out once in a while. They have to go to a doctor's appointment. You got to go, right? <clears throat> some of you want to go to the grocery store. You got to go. You might have someone doing it for you. That's okay. But if you do, or, and, and think about if you're one of those that you're kind of very cautious right now, you're stuck at home. Let's go back and further in time before the pandemic. When you were going to the store regularly for classes or you went anywhere and you got to your destination and you were done with your destination and then you went home, did you have to look at every single road sign to get home? Did you have to put on your GPS to make sure you knew what road to turn? <clears throat> did you have to go, okay, oh, here's that, oh, I got to do this. And, where is that one street now to my house? Now, if you are like that, you might want to go see a doctor because <laughs> that's a whole different problem, right? But the reason why I ask is that is because, no, once you're, once you are, once you're out in your neighborhood, some of you, I've met some people, this, but I've lived here for all my life. I've lived here for 20 years. Now, think about this. You go to... Let's say you go to another city, or you move, or you go out of town, or when you did, you visited your kids, or you went somewhere other than your normal area, and then they said, you know, I'm going to go up to hit the store. Now we're doing that, what I just said. We're looking, we're using GPS, um, looking for the road signs, and looking, okay, where to, where to turn. We do that. Why is that? Now, it's interesting. Show of hands. Say you go to uh, Owen. Have you ever been to Tucson? <clears throat> no? So Owen is shaking his head no. So if Owen came to Tucson and he was visiting us here and I said, Owen, uh, you wanted to go to this restaurant, you go to this address in there. Now, Owen, let me just put you, I'm going to spotlight you. Is that okay? All right. We're going to look at Owen for a minute. So, Owen, if you were in Tucson visiting me, and you said, where's a good place to go? And I say, go here. And I give you an address. What would you do? Would you just get in your car and go? No. You'd get directions, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. You'd write them down. <laughs> you'd write them down. Do you use your GPS at all? No. You don't use a phone? So you'd write them down. and you, That's even worse because then you'd have to rely on this while you're driving. You're reading and driving at the same time. Shame on you, Owen. Shame on you. No, but then I tell you, go here, go there. Now, if you did it four or five, six times in a row, pretty soon you're probably not going to use those directions or as much. No, as much. Yeah. That's my point I'm making here. What is the difference between where, what you do now, driving somewhere, and when you <clears throat> go to a new place? Is it memory or is it something that you do by habit? And if you really think about it, it, it's one of the biggest driving things that many of us tell our students. It's not so much that we have good or bad memories. It's that we do things by habit. You do it enough, and pretty, pretty soon it's second nature. So to me, my biggest, before I do anything, playing by memory is nothing merely than doing something by habit. Okay? So, when you wake up in the morning, 
What do you do to get going? Does everybody have a ritual? <clears throat> Some people get the cup of coffee. Some people go sit at the organ and they play, right? I like to get, I, I like to get up in the morning and exercise to get myself going a little bit. <clears throat> Some people like to get up and play, in the, play on an instrument. Well, we have certain things that we do that's second nature. And it's almost like, I hate, it's kind of like brushing your teeth. I go, I work out, I feed my dogs, I get my daughter, get her up, we eat breakfast, I do this, that, and everything is just kind of like second nature. Well, it's the same thing <clears throat> with memorizing a song. It's merely doing something over and over until the point where you don't have to do it <clears throat> without thought process, okay? So, first thing I wanna tell you on your notes there, and it says number one, if you have it, and if you don't, write this down. There's a blank line. <clears throat> I want you to write the word song selection. So if you have this sheet here, I'll see if I can type it here. Song selection. Okay. Now right above it, I would probably recommend before you learn the actual act of memorizing a song, I'm going to put warm up first. with warm up with a song first that you are comfortable oops with okay now i'm going to come back to the screen a few times folks okay so let me turn this off for a minute before you actually begin learning to memorize a song, I always say pick a song that you're comfortable with, warm up, something that you, you do. I can, I've been with Fletcher Music Center since 93, and I can't tell you how many times over the years a student comes to class, or I've heard a student, I've met a lot of students, they go to class, and get, they get that new song that the teacher's teaching that day, and it's not one that you've normally played, and it's got a little bit more chords in it, or the fingering is kind of something that's not normal. And then what do they do? They go home, and the first thing they try to do is they play that song. And I recommend, everybody has a different method. Every teacher's going to think theirs is best. For me, when I want to learn a new song that I'm not comfortable with, I'm going to tell you what I do first. I go and I sit at the organ, and I play all of the songs that I'm comfortable with first. I'll do a When the Saints. I'll do an In the Mood because I played it forever. I've done all of me. I'll get my fingers warmed up. <clears throat> you ever see a, a symphony orchestra? Anybody get a chance to see a symphony play? You get there early enough. You ever see what they do beforehand? You ever notice it? They all start playing their instruments. You got the oboes and the saxes and you got the strings and you got all this noise going on. You know why they're doing They're warming up. They don't just go out there cold and put on a performance. Even the best musicians warm up. The best in the world. So if they've got a show coming up, they'll go out and they'll warm up a little bit before they go. <clears throat> so before you do anything that you're not comfortable with, I would put that on your notes. Warm up with some songs that you're generally comfortable with. This, to me, applies to anything that you're doing that's a little bit different with music. Tico Tico is a song I like to reference to. 27, 26, how many years I've been doing this, I still have never learned to play that song without the music. I have not put the effort in it. But 
it's a hard song. If I wanted to memorize that song, I wouldn't put the music up right now and start doing the practicing. Or I would be frustrated. I would warm up. I'd get my fingers warmed up, nimble, playing the songs, comfortable. Because then when you go to the actual act of doing what I'm going to teach you today, it just makes that a little easier. To me, that really should be step one. <clears throat> but I'm going to say that I'm going to put that before step one. Okay? So I'm going to screen share the sheet. So I have warm up with the song. Let me change the colors here so you can see what I'm typing. Something, get comfortable. Okay. Song selection. Let's talk about song selection. You ready for this? I'm going to type three things. Pick a song that's easy. B, pick a song that you're familiar with. C, pick a song that you like. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to leave that up there for a moment. And I'll come back to the screen a few times. And then I have something a little clever for you that I'm going to tell you in, in a little bit. And it should work theoretically. I'll, I'll, I'll preface it with that just in case it doesn't. <clears throat> All right. So I put up here, in fact, I'm going to even make this even larger. <laughs> Pick a song that you are comfortable with. Okay? Be warm ups with a song. Before you get into learning how to memorize a song, Song selection, topic, pick a song that's easy. Let me make some pretty colors here. Okay. Pick a song that you're familiar with and pick a song you like. Now I'm going to turn that off for a moment. <clears throat> it's funny, a song like Mary Ann gets a bad rap because that's a song that we teach in the very early stages of a student's career, <laughs> hobby career. The great thing about Mary Ann, I'll tell you what I like about Mary Ann. It's a very simple song, okay? There are songs out there, if you look at those notes, let me put it back up, those three points are more important than you think. Everything I'm telling you about right now is more just mental preparation. The actual act of memorizing a song, the mechanics, is actually relatively simple, and I'll show you how in a little bit. But I have on here song selection. Okay? Pick a song that's easy. <clears throat> I referenced Tico Tico a little while ago. If you looked at the music to Tico Tico, an easy play, it is not an easy song to play for most people even that are good at playing. So when you want to get in the habit of learning to memorize a song, I would I think it's very important you start off with something easy. Sometimes it may mean a song like a Marianne. That Conductor Magic book, those materials, those songs, those are perfect songs to work with. Number two, or B, Pick a song that you're familiar with. If I said the song, uh, I don't, I'm, the, I'm trying to think of a song that you wouldn't know. <clears throat> but if I mention a song title, it happens every now and then. I said, have you ever heard this song? 
And even if I hum out the melody, they still don't know what it is because they've never heard the song. It makes it a little harder to even learn the song to begin with, let alone memorizing the song. So I always say, not only you want to pick out something easy, but pick out something you're familiar with. When the saints go marching in. Spanish Eyes is another example. That's a nice, easy song that for the most part, most people are familiar with. Release Me, Love Me Tender, those Conductor Magic songs. Those are great songs to go, go back and, and use for what we're doing today. <clears throat> I chose When the Saints Go Marching In for a reason, and I'll tell you why. I have a lot of fun with it. And pick a song that you like. I happen to like When the Saints Go Marching In, as I'll explain in a little bit. These three points here are very important. So today I chose as a sample, and I've done this class in the past, and I always use this song, When the Saints Go Marching In. Okay? It's a nice, simple song. It's generally, I think it's song four or five in Conductor Magic or something like that. It's a very easy song, as you can see. The notes are easy to use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Now, before I go to number two, this is where the heart of the class begins. Before I go to number two, does anybody have any questions? Do I have any hands you got to raise? Raise now or forever hold your peace. Okay. This is the part that's going to be tricky because when I do this with a group, it's a little different. <laughs> because I get some group participation. So we'll see how this works out on Zoom. All right, I'm gonna continue giving you some words and then we're gonna, we're gonna demonstrate. All right, so let me go back to here. And I'm gonna copy this and then retype it. And I'm gonna put the here, learn the song in segments. Okay. Learn the song in segments. All right. And let me take this here and let me give you A so I can demonstrate. Play the seg. I'm going to put in, I guess, I don't know why I put quotes, but I'll just follow my notes. Play the segments frequently. Okay, and then play the part of the song that you learned without the music. Ooh. <clears throat> So go ahead and type that in. I'll give you a minute to write that down, and then I'll demonstrate with the music here in a minute. So learn, you're going to learn the song in segments. <clears throat> this is how many of the staff members do it. Some, the segments are larger than others. Today we're going to keep it simple. Okay, so the, the topic, the second part of this, learning the song in segments. And then when, when you do that, you're going to play the segment, that segment frequently. And then you're going to play that part of the song that you learn without the music. And let me, let me, sit, let me demonstrate. <clears throat> I'll come back to this in a moment. So what I'm going to do, this music is nice because you'll notice here, C E F G. It the way this song, the melody is, the the melody notes, the words change, but the melody notes repeat. C E F G, C E F G, C E F G. Now you see there's a change in the melody here. So just looking at the music visually. What I would do is take my music and do this to it, put the line 
here as an example. Okay? So you have C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G. <clears throat> so everybody that's writing, watching, listening, write down, just write down these four notes, letters, C, E, F, G real quickly, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my music, or the notes, and it says, play segments freak. So I, what I did is I, this is the segment that I chose right here. All of this up to this point. So in my notes, it says, learn the song in segments. So I chose a segment, and it says, play that segment frequently. Play that part. Oh, I'm going to start with that. Play the segment frequently. And then once I do it frequently, I play that part of the song that I learned without the music, okay? So I'm going to take the screen off for a minute, folks, so you can see me up here doing it. <clears throat> so I have a black and white copy, but that's okay. So I have a My Music. I marked it just how I showed it to you. And what I'm going to do is take the, the rhythm that I had earlier, which is what I did, razzmatazz, and <clears throat> now there is one other little side trick to this that's pretty important, and that is making sure, picking the song that's easy, something you're familiar with, and a song that you like is one thing, but make sure you pick a rhythm style that works with it, that works nicely for you. There's, what you don't want to do is pick a sound. When you're doing this, keep in mind, there might, you, you might have some of these oops moments. moments. What you don't want to do is put on a sound where you have an oops moment and, and it sounds bad on top of that. <clears throat> so for example, I would not use a banjo on this if I was doing this for the first time. Because if you make a mistake with a banjo, guess what? It stands out. Or a piano. Sometimes I'll just put on a, a, just a classic organ sound. You know what's great about an organ sound? When you make a mistake with an organ sound, it's, it's hardly noticeable. It's not, it doesn't stand out as bad. Believe it or not, a lot of songs that I play that I'm really, if I'm just learning and I'm having this, I'm really thinking about the music and I'm looking at my hands and what have you, I always use an organ sound first to get comfortable with that song. And then I'll go back and I'll try the other sounds. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to pick a rhythm, however, that I really like. In this case, I'm using razzmatazz. Uh, you can use big band. You can use swing. And then put it at a tempo that's comfortable for you. Okay. So I'm going to slow it down. It, razzmatazz happens to come up pretty fast. That's pretty fast. So, and for most students doing this for their first time, I would just recommend um, slow it down to the tempo that works for you. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slow it down. I've got it to 145. <clears throat> now back to the music. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate that I'm going to play C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G. And I'm going to play that. Now I'm going to stop right there. What did I say? In the notes, I said, play that segment frequently. Now, I'm not going to do it here, but what I would do is play it four or five, six, however times you think that you're ready. And once you're done doing that, here's the, here's the part that, that people have a little fun time with. I'll say fun time. <laughs> I'm going to put a little asterisk over here.
this is the part where, where everything, it'll tell you what to do next. <clears throat> it says, play the part of the song that I just learned, which I was doing, without the music. Okay? So, I'm going to play that part. Okay, I'm going to stop because that was the segment. And I'll do it again. And then again. And then again. And I'll do it a few times. And then this is the part that it all, this is the tricky part. You got to take the music, folks. Are you ready? And you got to do this. Turn it away. Put it away. That's the hardest part. Is you got to actually take away the music and give a shot what you just did. Now, I notice I didn't play the whole song. And then I'll play that part. I have a blank piece of paper here. <clears throat> All right. Now, if you find yourself not being able to do it, then guess what? Don't go any further. Now, I'm going to scroll through my gallery view for a moment here. And I just want to see some hands raised. How many of you, when you play a song, you put your book up, you play a song, or, or you play that song more than once or twice, and then you just kind of go to the next page, and you'll go find another song. Do you play the same song over and over, right in a row? No. Some of you have more than one music book. <clears throat> yeah, seen some heads there. Yeah. You got these music books. The last thing you're going to do is play your favorite song three or four times in a row. In fact, I know this for a fact. Many students, I've had them tell me, oh, I'll sit down and I'll play. I've got my best songs ever, and I'll play this song from there. And then, oh, and then when I'm done with that, I'll go to this page and I'll play this song. See, the thing is, is that's the hobby of music making, is to play all these wonderful songs. So the reality is, it's not that you have a bad memory if you can't memorize a song. It's because... You're not putting the effort in it. You're, you're putting the effort in enjoying the music out of the songs. And you want to play the song, you go to the next one, you go to the next one, you go to the next one. That's the beauty of that. <clears throat> but when it comes to learning it, to memorize a song, this is where you got to take one song and do it in bits and pieces, like I said. So go back to this page here, and you'll see it says, play that segment frequently, and then you when you get to the point after six, seven, eight, nine times, then you play it without the, out the uh, music. Now, <clears throat> can someone unmute themselves and tell me what the first four notes were again, please? C-E-F-T. Okay, so I'm going to start with on my screen. Inez, what is the first four notes? C-E-F-G. Is that what it says in your music there? C-E-F-G. Yeah. Have that written down? <laughs> Is that what you wrote down? C-E-F-G. Where, where did you write that down? Hold on one second. Inez, where did you write that? Let me see. Oh, so you have it on your notes. You didn't put, put, have the music in front of you. You're no. looking at your notes there? Yeah. All right. Tell me the first four notes again, Inez. C-E-F-G. Say, what are the first next four notes? C-E-F-G. And what's the next four notes after that? Yeah. Okay, now, are you looking at your notes right now? No. Okay, I noticed some of you are you. just not. I am. All right, let me hear it again. Let me hear it. For Charlotte, what are the first four notes? C-E-F-G. Are you looking at your notes? No. I am. Okay, what are the next four notes? C-E-F-G. Okay, and what's the next four notes after that? C-E-F-G. Okay. Now turn your paper upside down. Don't look at it. What are the first four notes? C E F G. What's the next four C -E -F -G. notes? C E F G. What's the next four notes? C E F G. Well, you got a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I'll tell you. Let's give a round of applause to Inez. Big round of applause, everybody. Charlotte, let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> So you get the point that I was trying to make here. And I noticed some of you were also chiming in. <clears throat> yeah, C-E-F-G, C-E-F-G, C. Yeah, pretty soon we could all say it together, C-E-F-G. 
Let's do it, folks. Ready? C E F G. C E F G. Yeah, that's the part that gets a little on Zoom. <laughs> but you get the point. And if you took that, those four notes that you have in your hand, and you're C E F G, C E F G, C E F G. You do that. You do that enough. You can put that away easily. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and now, 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 when it comes to music, it's different. I remember the day. I was in high school in music theater, and I had memorized my lines, and I was, on, I was always one of those uh, <clears throat> last-minute people, and I think this is what made me good at memorizing stuff, because I remember it was time that we had to start doing rehearsals in, in school and class, and I was not ready the night before, and I remember there was a certain scene that I had to be, and I remember having my words to my screen, and I kept reading it, and I kept walking around, and I was saying it out loud, and I was saying it out loud, and I was doing what we just did, CEFG, and other, and, but differently, I was saying the lines to the play, and that sometimes helps too. Maybe before you play the song, maybe, maybe say the notes out loud a few times, okay? But... Now, so we have the first four notes, and you're going to play those first four notes with the music, and the chords are relatively simple. You got a C chord in there, you got a G, you got an F. You're nice, you're one finger chords, right? It's probably a piece of cake for some of you. That's a good thing. Remember I said earlier, if you're starting to, if you're learning to memorize a song for the first time, don't pick a hard song. That's the worst thing you could do to yourself because then you it might potentially have the opposite effect. Pick a simple song first. So you play it <clears throat> over and over with the music. C, E, F, G. C, E, F, G. And maybe even say the notes out loud when you play it. You kind of, And pretty soon, when you can get to the point where you can take that music away and just play that part of the song... Just that part of the song without the music and you feel comfortable with it, guess what? It's time to move on to the next part. So let me give you that information. <clears throat> let me pull it up again. Let's see here. Where am I in my notes? Number 3A. Okay, you ready? Let's copy this. And move this down here. And let me learn another part, or I'll say segment, slash segment. Of the song. <clears throat> okay. So, let me go to the music here. So maybe, so we had the first part, C-E-F-G, C-E-F-G, C-E-F-G. I bet you if I asked everyone on this class today, can you all do C-E-F-G without the music, without your notes? I, I could almost bet that 99% of you could. I have to leave my little, myself a little room for just in case. But All right. <clears throat> The next part of the song is C E F G C E F G C E F G E C D. So here, so maybe I'll do something like this. Now, here's the thing: it's got to work for you, folks. This is just a, an example. Someone may say, "You know what? My next part is all of this." Someone may say, "My next part is just from here to here." Okay. <clears throat> So you see this next segment here? E, C, E, D. E, C, E, D. That's the next segment. So what I'm going to do is type up here. When you learn the next segment, You ready for this? Big fancy step here. Repeat to A and to B. 
So basically, you're learning the next segment of the song, and you're going to do what I just said here. All right? <clears throat> so we'd have, we got C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G, C, F, G. So maybe here, we kind of overlap, and we go G, E, okay, so E, E, C, E, D. E, C, E, D. So in this case, because this is in the middle of the measure, I may actually start it from here. It's whatever works for you. Whoops. I zoomed in a little bit. So let me zoom it back over to me here. And then using that music, <clears throat> so I've got this part down. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is learn the next part. Stop right there. Stop, stop, stop. Do it again. Do it again. <clears throat> All right. Now, and you do it over and over until you do that part, and you do it over and over and over. And what did I say in steps two A and B? You keep doing it over and over, and then you do what? Take it away. Ooh, scary, scary, scary. <laughs> That's the scary part. Folks, keep in mind, you're at home by yourself. Who cares? You can do this over and over. <clears throat> you can make all the mistakes in the world. <laughs> but that's the point of it. You play that part over and over and over. Now, you ready for this? So what's the next part? Let's, let's pull that back up how I had it. So we, we did the, we said C, E, F, G, so we're blue in the face, right? The next part is C, E, F, G, E, C, E, D. So kind of say to yourself now, <clears throat> E, C, E, D. Say to yourself, if you're doing this right now, E, C, E, D. E, C, E, D. And if you do that enough, E, C, E, D. E, C, E, D. E, D. Now, as I'm saying it, take your paper away and repeat to yourself. E, C, E, D. E, C, E, D. Now, pretty soon, you're just going to, you're going to naturally say those four notes to yourself. All right? <clears throat> so, let's see here. Let me stop the screen share. Let me look at some happy faces here. Who's brave enough to say E, C, E, D? Anyone? Okay, Cheryl, Francis, unmute yourself. We have E, we got E C E D. E -C -E -D. Say it again. E C E D. One more time. E C E D. I want to hear it again. E -C -E -D. Oh, tell it to me. E -C -E -D. <laughs> All right. All right, Carol. I unmuted you by accident. E D. E C E D. E C E D. Who just did that? Let me look. Carol. Me, Carol. Okay, which Carol? We got a couple Carols here. Clifford. In England. Clifford. In England. All right. E C E D. Let me hear it again. E C E D. E -D. Are you sure? Yeah. Positive. E C E D. Are you using their notes? No. No. You're not cheating. No. Oh, way to go! All right, now let's stop right there for a minute. What were the first four notes? Anybody? C E F G. C E F G. C E F G. Now here's the next part. Are you ready for this? I didn't see. I'm going to put up on the screen, and I'm going to tell you part four. This is kind of a. This is kind of a. Hopefully, you have a little bit of an aha moment for some of you. Some of you already know this, but play both segments without the music <clears throat> and then you're going to repeat all right write that down and then i'll come back to you and explain play both segments without the music so here's what we did folks and i'll, I'll bring it back up in a minute play both segments without music so here's what we did 
we took and what we did is we first said these four notes so many times that you guys could do it blindfolded. C E F G C E F G C E F G. And then we took the next four or five notes, E C E D E C E D. <clears throat> and you get to the point where you're comfortable doing that. Then here's the next part. You ready? Then we make this. Let me do this. We make this. Oh boy. This is not a bad circle. This is not a good circle. Oh, this is a bad circle. Oh, holy smokes. Well, give me a second here, folks. Doop, boop. There we go. We take this. I'll delete that. <clears throat> we basically take this whole thing that we just memorized in two parts. Now we make it one. So basically, everything I show you is repetitive. So now this becomes one segment. And I'll draw a line here. And what I'll do for the purpose of this is make it a different color. Identifying that maybe we just make this one segment. Now let's see if this works. And if it doesn't, guess what you get to do? You go back. So the first four notes were, somebody can chime in. C, E, F, G, right? Let me hear it from somebody. C-E-F-G. -E All right. Let me hear it again. C-E-F-G. -E All right. -E now, it's hard to get everybody in sync because we're on Zoom, but that's okay. You're all getting the notes. I can hear it. Now, the next part is C-E-F-G, 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 E-C-E-E-D. Now, we got to do that whole part. All right. Let's start with you, Inez. Inez first. She's on my top of my screen. C E F G C E E F G C E F G E C C D. All right. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put Inez on the spot, and I'm going to put a few of theirs on the spot here. Are you ready, Inez? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it together. C E F G C E F G C E F G E C E D. Now you do it. C E F G C E F G C E F G E C E D. Oh, big round of applause. <laughs> There's a lot of people applauding. I could see them. <laughs> now, does anybody want to brave and try to do it? Charlotte? You've got your notes there. I got it. All right, let me hear it. C E F G C E F G C E F G E C D E. Now you have the notes in front of you. I did that time. Okay, do do it again one more time with your notes. C E F G. You can sing it out too if you want. I did. C E F G C E F G C E F G E C E D. Turn the paper over. Let's try it without the paper. C E F G C E F G C E F G C E D E. Ah, Oops, you might have got what? I got wrong. That's okay. <laughs> but, but that's the point of this. That's the point of what I'm saying is you do it, you do it. And then if you, oh, something is not right. And then you just do it again and you do it again. But folks, <clears throat> it's a little more fun when you're playing the music. Right now we're just doing it by you saying C-E-F-G, so humming it out or singing it out. The fun part is when you take, you have it set up and you do it. And you do that part, once you got one part and you got the second part, now you work on the two parts together as one kind of referring back to the initial steps that I gave you. And you do that enough times. What did I say in 2A and 2B? Play that segment. What happens is the two segments now become one. And we do what? We play it over and over and over. And then you take that chance and you flip it over.
Whoop. And when you run into that, guess what? Flip it back over and give it another shot. Okay? Now, there's a couple other things that are helpful tools. I'm glad uh, I didn't think of this, and I meant to say this. Sometimes humming the song out too helps because you're learning notes. You can hum the words, but the words is not what you're remembering. You're trying to memorize. What you're memorizing are the notes, okay? So at least singing the notes out to the best of your ability to yourself sometimes helps. Here's another nice little helpful tool. I think I got... <clears throat> you ready for this? This is kind of cool if you have it. <clears throat> if you have a, a floppy disk or a built-in recorder, sometimes I've had to do this because this song is is okay because it's a uh, CFG song, but every now and then I get one with D minor and a G minor in there. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if I could just learn the melody first. So here's what I'll do sometimes. You ready for this? <clears throat> I'm going to turn off my microphone when I do this because I don't want you to hear the record hear it that way when I'm doing it. But what I'm going to do is I've got it set up, and I'm going to record the song here, okay? But what I'm not going to do is record the melody. I'm going to only record the left hand. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, simple. So normally, I play the song like this with an intro. <clears throat> when the saints have risen, go marching, you know, and I could sing along, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record it, but instead of playing the melody, I'm just going to hum it to myself so I play the chords as I see it. So just a nice little extra little tool here. So what you're not going to hear is me doing this. Oh, when the saints go marching in. I'm going to be doing that, but you'll hear the music because I don't want you to hear that when I'm doing that. So <clears throat> actually, I'll do that. <clears throat> I think I'm going to change my mind on that as I'm saying it. Okay, and then I'm going to play back the recording and then just do the melody. Okay, so here we go. Now watch the chords. It's going to change. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching chord change to be there in the number when the saints go marching in ending oh you know what <laughs> guess what I forgot to do press record Tony, how come you didn't catch me? <laughs> I saw the look. She saw me the whole time, said, I'm going to let him finish. <laughs> okay, so let me push record. That was the point of this, is the record. Okay, here we go. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. I want to be there in the number. When the saints go marching in. Okay, so I've recorded that part, and I'm going to press stop. So now that's recorded. Now, you don't have to hum out the notes. If you want to sit there with your music and just kind of see if you want to say the notes in your head, whatever works, the key to this is this, is when you do it that way, you want to make sure 
that the chords are following, everything is changing on time. Otherwise, it might be, it might work against you, okay? But now I'm going to play it back. I'm going to hold the music here so you could see. And I'm going to play those, just the melody notes. I can't hear. Oh, I know what it is. Here we go. The melody's not going to play. I got to play it, but the left hand was already done. C, E, F, G, E, C, E, D. Stop right there. Okay. So, that's just another little helpful tool you can do. That's kind of nice. Now, before I give you some final notes here, um, can anybody tell me what the first four notes were? <clears throat> C, E, what? F, G, E, F, G. C, E, F, G. Let me hear it again. C-E-F-G. And one more time. C-E-F-G. Okay. And then the next, the next several notes are E-C-E-D. -E Let me hear it again. E-C-E-D. Okay. Now let's put it together. Are you ready? C-E-F-G. E-F-G. E-F-G. E-C-E-D. Now. Do that a few times, take away the music, and practice doing that. And here's the thing. When you get to that point where you feel you're comfortable, you ready for this? Go to the next segment. You, exactly. So now what happens is when you're comfortable playing this whole piece here, this is no longer two segments. It's one segment. It may go away. Let me delete that. It may become one. And then your next segment could be, after holding it, E, E, D, C, C, E, I don't know, maybe in here. D, C, E, G. I, it, it's up to you what works for you. Now, you may find in a song like this, you may find in a song like this that the segments, they may not have to be this short. This segment just happens to work out nicely because these notes, the way they repeat, Okay, they just happen to be the same melody notes. <clears throat> now, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type a little something extra down here. Jerome needs some music that I took out of order. There it is. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to type up a couple of little side notes. All right. Let me just hit text here. This is going to happen, folks. Frustration. <laughs> it's going to happen. The worst thing you can do when you do that, <clears throat> let me change the color on this. When frustration kicks in, I just have a little something I put in here. The moment you start or you begin to feel, right, start feeling frustrated. Get my grammar right here. I don't know. The moment you start feeling frustrated, stop and play a fun, fun song. So I put a note in order in there. <clears throat> now earlier when we started the class, and I asked a lot of folks, about songs you're comfortable with. Everybody has those songs. Remember I talked about warming up songs and the songs you love to play and you're just, when you're doing this, learning the songs to memorize a song, you're going to find the songs that are easier than others and you're going to find some that, oh, your brain is, hey, or, like, like Joni, 
she was having a technology breakdown Friday when I talked to her. She actually, she was, just, what, what did you say? It was a technology burnout or uh, what was the, uh, something of that. She I, was said I, I said, I can't take any more technology lessons for today. Yeah, it was, she was basically like, oh, I've had enough of technology. You know what? In anything, that means, okay, take a break from it. Same thing with this. When you're learning to memorize a song, okay, it's very important that when you get to that point, when you're frustrated, stop. And if you want to continue playing, at least pick up something else you feel like playing or walk away from it, whatever. Okay? The worst thing you can do <clears throat> is sit there and work at it and make it become work. The minute it becomes work, then that's the opposite of recreation and music making. You remember, when we do concerts and things like that, and when, we, when I got hired at Fletcher Music Centers, what have you, we kind of had to learn to memorize songs because when we're in a moment, we're going to demonstrate one of our instruments. If we can't find that music book, how else are we going to demonstrate it? So we, we kind of have to work at this. You as hobby players, you don't have to. You got all your music for a reason. But <clears throat> start off, I got I to gotta say it over and over, start off with some easy songs that you're familiar with and something that you relatively like. Okay? I picked When the Saints Go Marching In for a reason. Here's the reason. Here's why I like playing the song. It's not that I like playing the same notes over and over when the saints go marching in. Here's why. I'm going to type it in here. Playing by memory contributes to, and I'm going to put in here in quotes, creativity. Okay, so when I finish up, I'm going to play the song When the Saints Go Marching In, but <clears throat> i tell you why I like playing When the Saints Go Marching In, because it's so easy, and I've played it so much without the music that I actually don't play it the way the notes are written. If you ever, if you ever hear, if you had the piece of music to all of me, and actually, here's a, here's a great example. This actually happened to me about, I want to say, two or three weeks ago. I was demonstrating one of the models in one of the uh, virtual demos. And that particular model had a, had a style on there that is normally found on a larger model. The style is called New York Swing. Okay, for New York, New York. Okay. And I was playing on an organ called the uh, <clears throat> Encore, I believe. It was that or the Holiday Classic, one of those midline instruments. Well, for the longest time, you had to find that rhythm on a larger model. When those models, smaller models, came out, they had it on there, and I was demonstrating anybody, I'm going to take the music, just like a student would, and I put New York, New York up there. I've played that song so much without the music, it's not an easy song to memorize. When I finally memorize it and stop using the music, I had a certain way that I played it every time. <laughs> halfway through the song, I was using the music to demonstrate to students. And halfway through the song, the notes weren't doing it the way I was doing it. And I actually started making a bunch of mistakes. <clears throat> because I learned to play that song without the music and playing it so much, I just naturally added things that weren't part of the song. So when I started to try to use what I read, it actually made it harder for me. Jerome Johnson taught a Christmas class yesterday. He tried to play Silent Light with the music and he was making a bunch of mistakes. And I was over here with my microphone. Going, what are you doing? <laughs> but the minute he played it without the song, without the music, he was fine because he played it. He learned it initially with music. He learned to play it, and eventually it just became his own personality. And I have to encourage you that when you learn to play a simple song without the music, it's going to naturally, you're going to naturally add other little things to it. So instead of playing the song 
like this. Listen closely. And I'll speed it up just a little bit. Oops, that's transpose tempo. I'm going to play the notes on time. Okay, well, that's right, but I like it better like this, and I won't use the music, and I'll just kind of play how I do it. Now, were they both when the Saints go marching in? Yes, of course it was. But I've played that song so much over time that I kind of added a little extra notes in there. And went, oh, I like that. I like that. doesn't matter. That's what, that's what the beauty of it is. And finally, and I said it earlier, but I want to make sure you have it written down. Let me copy that and type in this. This is very important. Setup. Okay. It's very important to have a great sound when playing, or I like to say rehearsing any song that is. So make sure to pick a sound or setup that you really like. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to get started and you don't want to, ha you want to make sure you're doing this without any oops and really getting frustrated, some, keep in mind, put on an organ sound you, and you can't go wrong with that. Okay. The other last thing I want to put on here that I mentioned is, and I'm going to put a little side note over here, use recording feature if you have it. Let me put this. I actually thought of a few other things that I normally didn't did today, d normally didn't think of. And I'll put that over here, and I'll put that in a different color. <coughs> How about, nah, I don't like green. We'll just, we'll stick to black. Okay? So, <coughs> those are your notes. Hopefully you took care of them. Or you wrote those down. And there's your music. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you, and I have a theory, and then I'll finish off by playing the song without the music. And what will happen naturally, folks, if you ever wondered how we learn to improvise and add a little extra notes, it, it's really because we play songs without memory. And, or I mean, without the music. And naturally, extra notes get added over time, and it it almost start it starts it, it almost automatically puts you in a position where you're playing notes you're improvising without doing it on purpose. It just happens naturally. Okay, um, Mary Parker, you have a question. Mary Parker. Your hands raised? No. <clears throat> yes, it is. Robert. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, who just said that? Helen? When you uh, memorize your segment, do you also memorize the chord? Yes, because that's all part of the segment. Okay, you have to. You have to do that too. Well, you don't have to, but. It may not sound as good if there's some chord changes in there. No, if, no. If, now, here's the thing. If you think, like what I did is I played the chords first in the recording, and then I went back and do it. Now, if for the purpose of learning the notes, maybe you don't even play the chords. Maybe you just sit there and, and may, not, may not be as fun, but maybe you just go like this. C, E, F, G. 
C E F G C E F G E C E. No, I don't have a rhythm going on. I don't have to worry about the chord when I do it that way. If you use a rhythm and you don't change the chord, it may sound just a little funny is all. However, eventually you're going to have to learn that chord. Yeah. But here, here's the neat thing about it. There are less chords in a song than there are melody notes. Okay? And a lot of the chords are very similar. <clears throat> so they kind of go hand in hand, though. Okay? It, it's when to incorporate a chord when you're not looking at the music. Well, they, you do them both together. If you notice, that's why I went, I'm going to go back to my first points here. Pick a song that's easy. Mm -hmm. That's the starting point. Spanish Eyes, for example. Look at this. Here's, a, here's the chord. Let's see how long it takes before I change chords. Ready? Let me put on a bossa nova here. Here we go. I mean, it took a long time before I changed the chord. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the reason why I said in the beginning, when you're starting to do this, start off with something simple, something that doesn't have a lot of chords. Those conductor magic, if you have to, if you must, use Marianne. <clears throat> there's only two chords in that song, and there's not a lot of melody notes. Here's the reason for this, folks. There's a reason why we start brand new students in that class. Those songs are so easy to play that after about two or three classes, they start saying to themselves, yes, I can do this. The hand placement's in the same place. Yes, I can do this. That's what we want. We don't want someone to take a class or two and go, oh, I can't do this. We won't be in business. Well, now it's just like starting a whole thing all over again. You're starting a whole new process. For some of you, find those easy songs because what will happen is after you learn three or four or five songs that are very, very easy, you may not love the songs. What's going to happen is you're going to see something in common with a lot of other songs moving forward. A lot of easy play songs have a lot of things in common. And repeat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay? For example, and then I'll close it off by playing When the Saints. How many of you are familiar with this song here? Oh, I can see your lips moving and singing. Well, it seems like I see you dance around. I see some lip syncing going on or actually rising. Now, here's the, that's the first part of the song. You ready? Here's the second part. Pay very close attention. Wait a second. That sounded like the first part, didn't it? <clears throat> so here's the other neat thing is as you start learning to do this and you branch out and say, I'm going to try something that's maybe got a little bit more going on. Well, once you learn one part of the song, you've learned three parts of it. <laughs> Alley Cat's the same way. And then that is it again. And then when it goes repeats, the next part, it does the same notes. The words change, but the melody notes don't. Okay? Repetition, repetition. What happens when you get to the point you're frustrated? Stop. Walk away from it. Pick a fun song. Rub it off. Go have yourself some ice cream or something. Treat yourself for your hard work. Robert? Yes. Does uh, learning a proper fingering help with remembering the notes? Does learning improv? Say it again. You're it's muted. Proper. Proper. If you learn the proper fingering that you're supposed to use, does that help you re remember the notes? Yes, to a degree. But keep in mind, like I said earlier, there's a lot of songs that I've learned using the notes here. And once I take the way of note, the songs and I learn to play it without it, all of me, for example, I play it about 85% of how the easy play music is. <clears throat> because I learned it that way, 
by using the notes, and I finally got to where I could play without the music, and I've continued playing without music, and what will happen is you'll eventually have your own notes in there. Now, it doesn't mean the whole song will be different. It just means that the foundation will be the song, but throughout the song, you may end up adding in little notes in there that weren't in there before, and here's, the, here's, the, here's something to remember. If it sounds good, then it's okay to play it that way. If you heard five orchestras or bands or whatever play the exact same song, I guarantee you you'll learn you'll note you'll recognize each song, but you'll say, I kinda like the way this band did it different but because they did it differently. It happens all the time. <clears throat> I've got the world on a string. Anybody know that song? Got the world on a string. Who who sang that song? Frank Sinatra, no? Frank Sinatra, who do you, what crooner do you associate it with? Frank Sinatra, who else? Anyone else? Dean Martin. Dean Michael Martin. Michael Buble. Michael Buble. So we just had three different artists, and I bet you if you went back and listened to each of their recordings, it's all I've got the world on a string, but if you listen to the music, it, there's going to be a slight variance between all three. Okay? That's, that's okay. All right. <clears throat> well... I'm going to finish off by playing When the Saints Go Marching In. However, I'm going to add a little bit, a little bit afterwards, and that's why I like When the Saints Go Marching In. Now, here's the cool thing. <clears throat> what key is most of our music in? Key C. Of C, right? C. So if you learn to do some ad-libbing with a lot of songs with key of C because you've memorized a song, it'll apply to many of the other songs. A lot of people wonder, how do you those notes well once you learn it once with one song then you kind of learn how to do it with all the others so i'm going to finish off and and by the way just a reminder we need your support joe fontasha is driving all the way into the corporate office to do his performance tonight and art is going to be his cameraman oh boy joni's shaking his head <laughs> no it's reversed today joe's doing the playing <laughs> Joe can play the heck out of an instrument, but don't give him a camera. <laughs> oh, I hope he's not listening. All right. So I'm going to play a little When the Saints Go Marching In, and I'll do it a little bit differently the way I did it. I'll start off with the razzmatazz, but I'll have a little fun. Actually, you know what? I'm going to just change it all together. I'm going to do jumping jazz. Yes. I, I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, does it really help to record the – record what you did record first and then practice the chords yes. and then record yes it. and i think it will help but the, here's the trick to that like i said earlier you just have to make sure the chords are recorded in the time that it needs to be recorded okay got it okay if okay. you if you miss one measure if you're one measure off it's gonna it's gonna make it harder for you to do that now okay. by the way i'm and i'm gonna give you till tonight and i'm gonna take it away tomorrow morning the notes that I had today, okay, the notes that I did, I, all the changes and everything, if you click on that link today, theoretically, it should come up the way I typed it. Okay. Okay? Got it. Or wait, no, wait. I didn't give you a link. I gave you a handout. So I'm going to have to find another way to get you the link. I mean, I, I stand corrected. If it was a link, it would. So this weekend, make a note to yourself. This weekend when I send an email out, um, and I'm going to, if you have a computer, I'll upload it here. I don't want to give you bad information. I'm sorry. This weekend when I send out the upcoming classes and so forth, there's going to be a link to all of the files that I showed you. Um, It'll be updated in that, okay? Um, maybe what I'll do for tomorrow, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I want to get you all the information I gave you. I would say for now, make sure to check the email this weekend because I'm going to give you a link to, to all the files that I've, I've saved over the last four or five months, April, May, June, July, August, six months. And you can pick and choose what you want in there. And that, that link will be fine. And keep in mind, that link that you get, as I update it, 
you can access it repeatedly, okay? So I know I went a lot longer than I expected, but I want to make sure you got everything you needed today and hope you had a great time. I'm going to finish up here because I've got to go potty. <laughs> and I'm squirming here. Oh, I'm re still recording this, aren't I? I wonder if I could edit this out. Hey, it's yeah. Zoom. What do you expect, right? <laughs> here we go. I'm going to do it jumping jazz style. Jumping jazz. When the Saints. All right. And let me tell you what I'm doing here. I'll start with nostalgic. If, you, if some of you had the category presets, nostalgic zero, which gives me the trumpet shake. All right, we'll have a little fun here. I have another category here called Jazz. And Jazz Zero gives me Brass Shake and a Growl Saxophone. All right, and then for those of you who have the Virtuoso, I'm going to hit Virtuoso. And I'm going to put the Virtuoso, this sound, and here, and here we go. Thank you very much. Very, very, very much. We hope you enjoyed. And, and I'm going to find a way to get you my notes. Thank you so much. I'm going to find a way to get you my notes. Um, it probably would be helpful to, to um, watch what I do tomorrow because I'm going to do the same class. But I might figure a way. Uh, when you get the email tomorrow, because I send it out both days as a reminder, Click on the thing where it says uh, uh, for the notes, and if you see it come up as a link, what will happen is on Friday, you can go back to that link, and it will have the updated notes, okay? okay. So make a note <clears throat> on Thursday, Thursday. it's going to be a link to access the music tomorrow, and then on Thursday afternoon, when I'm done with the class tomorrow, because I'm doing the same class, It'll have the updated notes on it, okay? That makes sense. Um, and then one way or the other, plus hopefully you took good notes today. So thank you very yeah. much. Sorry I went a lot longer than I expected, but I wanted to make sure it's by good. the end of the day you had everything you needed. Thank you, and we'll see you tonight at Joe Fontesha's Zoom Musical Performance, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe and keep playing music. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.